I'll be talking to the celebrated harpsichordist George Malcolm about Scarlatti's career and more importantly his extraordinary contribution to keyboard music. George Malcolm will also be playing and conducting some of Scarlatti's finest work. First, here's a sonata L424 in D by Domenico Scarlatti. George Malcolm, uh, from the little we know about Scarlatti, one thing comes over very clearly, and that's the dominating influence of his father, Alessandro. Can you uh, speculate, or can you even say, what effect you think that had on him as a composer? Well, it held him back as a composer for quite a long time. I mean, his father was a very dominating personality, and, and I think young Scarlatti was a very compliant son. And his father, who was very proud of his musical talent, wanted him to, to follow the traditional Italian styles. And, uh, it, I mean, at, at the outset, he, he saw to it that he, that he did. And all Scarlatti's earlier music uh, 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 is, is choral and operatic, just in the style of his father and the other great Italian composers of the time. Was there any sense in which, as has happened uh, not uh, infrequently in music, the father saw this brilliantly gifted son as uh, not only a prodigy, but a uh, moneymaker, a way in which he himself could achieve more success? Well, I don't know about the money-making. I don't know how, how, how much that entered into it. 
But certainly, his father tried to guide his career and took him on visits to Florence and Rome and places. And whether, there was, whether he was thinking about the money, I don't know. I think perhaps not much. Apart from his father, who else would you say influenced his music most particularly? Well, that's very difficult to say. One, one likes to think that the two other great tercentenarians, however you pronounce it, who were born in 1685, did influence him. That is Bach and Handel. Well, I don't think Bach had very much influence on him. I think both Bach and Scarlatti were rather isolated from each other. But Handel was a different matter. Handel was an international figure, a travelled man, a man who was very successful in Italy, and whom Scarlatti met and admired, and I think Handel's music certainly had an influence on him. But we think of him first of all, or certainly in the first part of his career, as an Italian musician in the Italian tradition. Yeah, and was right. it a particular Italian composer whom he may have looked up to, who he may have imitated? Well, in regard to his, his, uh, his early stuff, his chordal and operatic stuff, it, it, it was sort of mostly his father. But in regard to his keyboard music, um, I think he would have been, to a certain extent, influenced by Frescobaldi. Frescobaldi was the great classic harpsichord composer uh, amongst the Italians. And Scarlatti, as, as, as a pupil, would certainly have had to learn some of Frescobaldi's stuff. This is Frescobaldi. Sounds like a very rich influence to me. What did he take from Frescobel, did you think? Well, he took everything that you could hear there, but developed miles beyond it. And, I, I mean, Frescobel, as, as you can hear, stays in the same key all the time. And of course, Scarlatti's great thing was to get onto some other key as quickly as possible. <laughs> you mentioned Handel being the uh, person who, in a sense, linked uh, Bach and Scarlatti. Uh, but we also know from the meagre evidence that we have about Scarlatti that his development really began to take place when he moved out of Italy and he himself travelled and it. went to Portugal and Spain. Can yes. you tell us what happened when that occurred? Well, uh, the, the whole atmosphere of the Iberian Peninsula and its folk music and everything got right into Scarlatti's blood. And uh, it completely liberated him in the end from the restrictions imposed by his father's personal domination and by the influence of, 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 of Italian music. And it was that, coupled with the brilliant ability of his pupil, Princess Maria Barbara, that seemed to generate in Scarlatti an, an ever-increasing musical and technical adventurousness. One of, the, one of the most audible and visible characteristics of, of, of Scarlatti's keyboard music is the way he loved hand crossings and long leaps from one end of the keyboard to the other, which were a great challenge to his pupil, particularly when she got fat in middle age, and it's not so easy then, and they're still a challenge now.
And I believe that he uh, went in for imitation of other instruments. Oh, yes, he loved imitating yeah. other instruments on, on the harpsichord. Um, lot, quite a number of his sonatas start off with a trumpet fanfare, like this one. And then, naturally, the Spanish guitar became a great favourite with him, and you hear the guitar in lots of his music. Mandolin, of course, was a favourite. See if we can do this. And that D minor sonata, incidentally, gives a marvellous example of another feature of Scarlatti's music that has been aptly referred to as the vamps. The vamps, there are two meanings that I have in mind. One's to do with seduction and the other's to do with vamping away. I presume yes. Scarlatti well, is I either think it's the combination away. or something even better. Yes, I think it's the vamping away and he uses it to get from one key to another. He uses repeated left-hand chords which move gradually from one key into another, keeping one guessing as to the final destination of the, uh, of the harmony. And meanwhile, the right hand keeps up a sort of continuous a continuous feature over the top, like this. That's what they call the vamps. Here's another very good example of it. Nobody had ever written anything like that before. It sounds very difficult to play, too. I mean, were, there, were there anybody around beside himself and his pupil who could play it at the time? Probably not many, no. I mean, another great thing of his was his predilection for violent discords. When one would expect a, a normal major or minor chord and got a, a real scrunch, something like one would nowadays call a note cluster. There are some very good ones in this piece. Do you have any record of what the reaction was to those discords particularly? Well, they must, have, they must have startled people very much indeed, just as they still do now. Was he himself able to play all the pieces he wrote? I think so. In the 18th century, composers were expected to be able to play their own music. Nowadays, one is probably either a composer or a performer. But in those days, I mean, one was a musician. You, you did the two. You, you composed and you played the stuff. Were all Scarlatti's sonatas, uh, this massive number of sonatas, written for the harpsichord alone? Well, now, that's a very vexed question. There were certainly pianos around. There were pianos in all three of the palaces most used by the Spanish royal family. Uh, how much notice of them Scarlatti took, nobody really knows. But I think that one or two of the sonatas sound to me as if they had the piano in mind. For example, if you wanted a soft, 
slow melody played in the right hand and an even softer, smooth accompaniment in the left hand, you couldn't really do it on an 18th century harpsichord. I can get a bit nearer to it on, uh, on this harpsichord, which has modern harpsichord, which has dynamic control mechanisms. But I really think that probably when Scarlatti wrote this next piece that I'm going to play, he perhaps had the piano rather than the harpsichord in mind. This is a lovely sonata in G, and I'd like to play it all, if you wouldn't mind, because it's got some quite astonishing harmonic shifts in the second half. <laughs> 